What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of Screen Printing Real, Real Talk. Talk. Let's get into it. Let's do it. I'm Ramon Jamal, and I'm sitting here with Rick Province of Ohio Ink Supply. And today, we're going to introduce a new segment called Print Cues. Print cues, guys. Ooh. The questions that you ask and want to know. So here we go. We got a, we got a little <laughs> bit of questions here. That's it, man. It's dope. Uh, we'll say this in the in the end of the video as well. But if you have any additional questions or if they stir, uh, feel free to call us. Feel free to shoot us some email. Feel free to comment below. All that. Cool. Do all of them. I got a couple <laughs> topics here. <laughs> Leslie, this goes out to you. Shout out. Uh, she wanted to know what is the proper screen printing pressure? Mmm, apply pressure. Well, I don't know, Leslie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> no, it's really about your angle and downforce. Okay. Um, good old adage says that pulling the squeegee is better for your print, pushing the squeegee is better for your arms. So you want a good angle there, anywhere from 30 to 45 degrees. So you're cutting the print across mm -hmm. the screen, not smushing the print in. You don't want your squeegee blade to lay flat. Okay. You want it to cut right on the edge there, Leslie. So if you need more info, feel free to reach out. Hey, real quick, I'm gonna interject. Yeah. Off the cuff, no fluff, you know how we do it. Oh yeah. So listen, um, a previous episode, we talked about the different squeegees, right? And there was one that you had that was like handles on it. Ron, shout out to Ron. Oh, okay. Easy grip. That's what it was. Okay. Yep, check it out. It's more ergonomic, it's better on the hands. Uh, you really don't have to think your way into the angle. It just naturally happens with your hands and it's better on the arms too. So that'll, that'll cut back so, on a, something that you gotta worry about is the angle and there you go. It's on the thanks website, Thanks for that, right? shout out Ron. It's on the website? It's on the website, check there them out. Go. All right. Uh, Mike. Uh, when do you uh, look to get a larger shop uh, or should you just say small? Um, this is kind of an opinion question. Well, really all these are, I'm no <laughs> super expert or anything. We're all learning, right? Yes, but um, my opinion is you want to be forced to get a new shop. Right. A lot of times, at least for me, uh, I see something as a consumer and I want it, I want it, I want it and I'm willing to do whatever I can to get it now. If you can halt that, I found that in my own personal life, that if you can halt that behavior in your mind and you can just be patient and and wait until your, your money really defines and your workflow defines growth, you're gonna be better off financially in the long run, I think. Right. That's worked out better for me. Um, rather than going and getting a loan, this probably makes me a poor salesperson, <laughs> but uh, rather than going out and getting a loan and going to 20, 30, 40, $100,000 in debt with a dream, it might be better to start with a Craigslist something mm -hmm. and work in the basement until you're so full with work you can't, you can't sustain there anymore and then grow into. That's my own personal opinion, Mike. Shout yes, out. Sir. Yes, sir. Three. Uh, this goes to Darlene. How do we remove heat pressed vinyl? Uh, heat, trust, heat transfer vinyl. Okay. Another video that we did uh, called VLR, uh, Vinyl Letter Remover by Albakim. We offer it on our website. It's, uh, it's in a bottle, it has a little red cap to it. You pop it and you sprinkle a little bit of the stuff on the back side. Uh, and even on the top of the front side of the vinyl, and you'll see it kind of lift itself up off of the shirt. Um, it might leave a little bit of residue that you get a little scrub pad or something light uh, that's not gonna like be too abrasive on the garment itself mm -hmm. or whatever substrate you're printing on, but you just kind of rub that and it'll come off. It's actually pretty surprising how good those things work. Awesome. So. Check it out, Albuquerque VLR, available on the website. That's it, man. There you go, darling. And you, you can probably link to those, uh, you know, videos. You guys can check them out. Yeah, we'll do that below for yeah. sure. Link Good it. idea. There Good idea. Is. Yes, sir. Randy, shout out to Randy. Randy, my dude. My dude. <laughs> uh, how to print a softer hand feel with Plastisol. Everybody wants the soft hand, you know, high opacity. You don't want the crunch on your shirt. You don't right. want a piece of paper sitting on your chest and making right. you feel heavy. You don't want the crunch. Um, you don't want the crunch. <laughs> yeah, it cracks, it peels, it feels heavy, it's just uncomfortable, you know. Right. Um, 
In my opinion, what I've done in the past, Randy, is I've mixed some uh, reducer, which is a, it's a curable reducer. Think of it like a paint thinner. So it thins out the ink, but it doesn't break down the integrity of the ink. You can still cure it in the, in the uh, conveyor dryer. All right. So check that out, put a little reducer in there, mix it in. You gotta be careful with especially whites uh, or any color for that matter. If you're, depending on the garment color you're, you're printing on, if your inks are lighter than the shirt it's going on, when you reduce, you're gonna reduce the opacity as well. Okay. So you're gonna make that print look a little lighter and you're gonna get more of a fashion forward, see-through print rather than a bold print that most businesses might be into. Right. So softer hand, typically people that really care about that, now I'm saying typically lightly, are not businesses are more in tune with fashion anyway. So it, it would accommodate their need. Cool, cool. Cool. Reduce the crunch. That's for you, Randy. Reduce it. <laughs> All right, John. Uh, this one's for John. Best t-shirts to print with Plastisol. Wow, that is a hard one to answer. Mm. I'm probably gonna get beat up for this one. Oh, come on. Um, it depends on what you're going for. If you're going, looking for like an everyday cheap, you know, I say like, again, cheap lightly, cause they're, it's gonna last, but you know, the economy class, run of the mill t-shirt, mm. Port and Company, PC61, PC55 are good shirts to print on. Um, even Gildan 5,000 and 8,000 are, are great shirts to print on. Uh, if you're looking more of a fashion forward, kind of comfortable structured fit, Tall text through TSC Apparel. Mm -hmm. You like that one too? Oh yeah, I like Tall text. Oh yeah, Tall text 202, and I think it's 202 it's, TC. Yeah, and I think, don't they got a, I don't know if this is right, don't they got a 325 or something like that too? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one too. Any yeah. any Tall text is really nice. Um, even some, uh, uh, Anvil makes a, uh, I think it's a 64,000, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, that's a good shirt. Uh, and then, Bella's doing big things. Oh man, Bella Canvas is. I mean, you're gonna pay. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna pay a little, little, little extra. Yeah. Budget. Hey, you know. I would say a cheaper. Yeah, I used to cheaper, but a lower cost option, um, com comparable to like a Bella would be a Tall Tex. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, okay. Tall Tex is, is comparable to. Yep. Bella. Check it out. Yes, sir. There you go, John. All right, Rick. I like your name, by the way. Nice. Madu. <laughs> Not that you had any uh, decision in that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, how to print with puff ink. Well, at least to the system that we offer on our website, we don't have a quote unquote puff ink um, that's pre-mixed. It's more of an additive or a base is what you'll see. Mm -hmm. So it's any Plastisol ink that you're able to add this puff uh, additive or a base to your existing ink and you mix it in typically four to ten percent by volume depending on which brand you're going with and what that does if anybody doesn't know is it adds texture it adds depth to the print mm -hmm. so high density typically has straight walls high density prints so if you're looking at this print here that Ramon has on if that star was to make rise off and add more of a 3D effect and you want straight walls on the side, then you'd go more high density. Puff has more of a rounded, almost like a marshmallow 3D effect. Mm -hmm. So it gives more of a, a rounded marshmallow effect, I guess. Yeah, puff. So check that out. <laughs> it's it's uh, pretty cool. Um, available on our website as well or any other great reliable screen printing supply company. Uh, Ted. This is for Ted. How do you use water-based palette adhesive? Well, good news. We made a video. Also, it's a feature video uh, way back when of the MC palette adhesive. Now we just call it Mad Kim palette adhesive, mm -hmm. but it's a water-based palette adhesive. We have great tips on there on how to use it. Quickly, just to answer your question, Ted, you basically take it and it's almost like a, uh, Think of it like a ketchup bottle or a condiment jar. Mm -hmm. uh, and you squeeze it in a Z-like or S-like shape over your palette. You take a squeegee, an old business card, an old credit card, an ink scraper, we have those on our site, and you just distribute that, that adhesive over the palette evenly or whatever area that you're printing on if you wanna save uh, extra adhesive. That's right. Why spread your whole palette with adhesive when you're only printing the left chest? My theory. Um, <clears throat> spread it out, put it under your flash dryer and let it dry up. 
Uh, if it starts to build up um, like matting or cotton uh, fabric on it, mm -hmm. you can spray it with a spray bottle of water, get a scrubber, ink scrubber, <clears throat> excuse me, a scrub brush, and just wipe it off with some paper towel or an old t-shirt and your tax back. You can get it to recycle a couple times before you have to completely right. refresh. There you go. But we did a sweet video on that. Uh, it's a feature video of our actual brand, um, but other great brands are out there as well. You can check out. All right, last but not least, Andrew. We have a ton of them. We can't get to all of them this episode. Right, 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 right. <laughs> we'll make another bit here and uh, keep them coming, please, because uh, yeah, we'll, we'll address those as they come in. Andrew, <clears throat> proper off contact height when you're screen printing. Again, a kind of a catch-22 question that has a very variable answer. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you're printing, uh, in my opinion. What I typically do is I would take a quarter, uh, you know, 25 cents, mm -hmm. and put it in each corner of your palette, of your uh, platen, and then put a actual platen that doesn't have the bracket on it or a board of some sort, three-quarter inch, same mm -hmm. thickness as your palette, <clears throat> and clamp it as you would a screen. And all that does is it gives you a rigid something to match up to your palette. Okay. Bring your screen, your head down, <clears throat> and match it up with your palette there. And make sure that it's touching the edges of those quarters. Okay. So you adjust your off contact on your press, depending on which press you have, so that it's nice and level onto those quarters. Um, you want it just, typically I do just a scotch above it. A scotch. A scotch. <laughs> <clears throat> we forgot to say plethora in this video. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but yeah, Andrew, there you go. Quarters is a good trick. I've seen washers being used, um, and then use something durable in your clamp so that you can line it up rather than a screen, obviously, which is, you know, more tensile and, uh, doesn't have as rigid, uh, the rigidity as a right, right. piece of wood might. Hey, so I think we might, we might have to do a video on that, man. I think I, I we need to see that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We can dive deeper into that for you, man. That, that I mean, sounds you good. Know, place and quarters. I mean, I think that'd be a cool video. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Stay tuned for that. Bro. Stay tuned. That's it. That's it. Another topic. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's all I got for That's today. Uh, we could go on and on and on. Please keep them coming. Right. Comments below. Email. Shoot That's us a call. Feel That's free to call it. if you have any questions. Anytime, by the way. Uh, our staff, will, uh, we're more than happy to help. So All day. All day. Cool. So, yeah. Like he said, y'all, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Smash the notification bell. Beep. And that's it. That's it. Until next time. Peace. Peace.